Hello everybody and welcome to another video. My name is Tom from Six Foot Networks. Today we're going to disassemble and look at the inside of one of these. Also we're going to clean it out. I typically disassemble my computers uh, twice a year. So since it's June we're going to do it and we're halfway through the year. So this will be its first cleaning for 2021. Why don't you come along? We'll grab the handheld camera and we'll take a look inside. All right so this is the computer in question and you can see that it's relatively clean you know the air exhaust has some of my fingerprints in it from handling it just now but other than that the ports are pretty clean and the ducting on the bottom is also relatively clean turn it towards the light so you can see it and that's pretty much it this is our property tag so that doesn't typically come on computers so anyway, I have this rag here to prevent my desktop from getting scratched. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all this on this rag and it should be fine. So in order to open this, there is a, a latch right here. It's got the little lock symbol. That means the cover is locked in place. But what you do is you slide it over and now you have the unlock symbol there. And essentially what we do is we pull this off and that reveals the inside of the computer. All right. This right here is the SSD, the Apple flash uh, disk. Uh, here's one set of sticks or RAM here. And here's the other set. This one I believe has 64 gigs of RAM. And this is essentially it. The inside of this is hollow for cooling purposes. Ooh, there are some spider webs on the exhaust. We're gonna have to take those out. Let's see what we have here. So the initial inspection of this computer looks relatively clean. I don't see anything major. So what I am going to do is I am going to take my my air this guy I am going to take this guy and I'm going to blow whatever's in here out so here's what we got I think I should still be in the shot I hope so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find a a torx bit that fits that so I'm going to rummage through here a little bit without jarring you guys too much this is a T8 oh T8 works Cool. So here's how we do this. All right, we know it works. We unscrew the retaining screw. And by the way, I would consider this job fairly advanced. So if you're not sure, be careful with it because you will void your warranty. But since this is an eight year old computer, there's nothing to be had. And I've done this a few times, so I would like to consider myself a professional. So this is a half terabyte SSD. This is one of uh, the Apple uh, drives that's uh, made by Samsung. So really interesting, really cool. I try to avoid touching the pins where possible. So I hold it uh, against its metal uh, I guess that's a heat sink, so a little along the edge, and there you go. So we're just going to set that over here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to pop both RAM sticks out. So how do you do that? And I hope you could see this. Right here is a little arrow, and you literally push that up in a direction that it's kind of pointing, and then this comes out, and you literally just pull these out gently wiggle them out. I'm going to put these on top of the plate over here that I showed you guys so that way there's no issues with static or otherwise and then I'll push that back in. Oops my light just fell over. Let me flip that over maybe this would be better. 
And then on this side, you do the same thing. Here, let me push that back in so you can see. Push up, and it just pops out. It's spring-loaded. Then you give it a little tug on the top, a little tug on the bottom, and it comes out in one piece. If you're replacing RAM, make sure you get it from a reputable source. Uh, I will always and forever recommend OWC because they specialized in, in Mac hardware. Or you can, of course, go to Apple. All right. All right. So we have the four sticks out. And actually, I may have lied to you guys earlier when I said this machine had 64 gigs of RAM in it. In reality, this one has four sticks of 8 gigs. So you do the math. It's definitely not 64, though. <laughs> um, and as you can see, these computers have four RAM slots. The two on this side and the two on... Hang on, let me flip this over. So the two here and the two here. So maximum four sticks. And I believe you can put 16 gig sticks in these to get the maximum supported RAM. I may be wrong, don't hold me to that. It's been a long time since I looked up specs for these. And that's really it. Um, typically, if my computer is not dirty, I'll t turn this over to the side, um, then I don't bother, you know, taking, you know, these screws out and popping this whole logic assembly out, as well as this one. You know, unless I'm servicing the processor on the inside, you know, you got to take all this apart and pull it out. I typically don't go that far because there's enough holes here. You know, like if you look at this, you know, I can stick this nozzle down here, in here, and also in here to try to get as much dirt out as possible. So it is what it is, but this is typically how far I go. And then anything else, like if there's if there's anything down here in the in the end cap, I will deal with that with either uh, my little tweezers here or another tool. Sometimes I use a, a Q-tip with some uh, isopropyl alcohol on it. So essentially, what's next for this is going to be a good old-fashioned. I'm going to put this drive here with the RAM. I'm gonna put this on on its side so because it's easy to roll. <laughs> Shouldn't really roll these, but I've done this for years and haven't hit an issue. But do this part at your own risk. So beware if you're listening through headphones, noise. So as far as this goes, I keep going until either this runs out of charge or the computer is clean. Like I said, I do these twice a year, so they're always relatively like this. My office has a paranoid air conditioning filters, so they typically look like this anyway. I do have some older Mac minis over there that I might tear into in a separate video. Um, and those are probably going to be filthy because those were in a rack for a few years and they weren't cleaned. These machines here, including the, the 2013 uh, workhorse that I have over here that drives this monitor tower, uh, they're both about like this because I take them down for maintenance. And these days, you know, on a very, very hot June day, um, you know, it's here in Los Angeles. I think it's 110 degrees outside. So what better time to do this than on a Saturday when you can't really do anything? Although, you know, there's always beach, but I need to get work done first. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to time lapse the rest of this. But uh, when we're done, I'll reassemble this and then we'll put, it, uh, put the lid back on it. And then we'll uh, put it back in production. Um, but enjoy the time lapse. One word of note, if you're going to use alcohol and a microfiber cloth, make sure you spray this on the cloth 
not on a computer, okay? Even though alcohol evaporates, it's still a liquid until it evaporates. So make sure you spray it on the cloth and then uh, give it a good wipe down, you know, to give it a nice shine. See, here I'll grab my handheld camera here and you can see that it's a pretty nice shine there. Keep the fingerprints off of it, you know. All right. So now, what else I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lid back on it. I'm going to set this to the side. Oh, and for the record, that's what came off of it, the top of it. So my hands clearly weren't too clean when I handled the top. So here's the top. This is solid metal, so be careful because. I feel the need to point out that inside here there is a rim that's right here. I'm not sure if the camera's picking that up with regards to the light. Maybe I can bring some light in here. Um, that rim right there where my finger is pointing at, that rim is very sharp. If you run your finger along the edge of it, you will cut yourself. It's like a, a soda can top that isn't really filed down or handled. This part's fine, you know. This part has no sharp edges inside or out. But this one in here, that one specifically, that's about an inch and a half down, that'll get you. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten myself with it. So we're gonna pick a new cleaner end of this rag. Looks like this rag's about due for the, for the garbage can. Spray it a few times. And we're going to go in here and just get anything out that may be, may be sitting in here. Yeah, oops. It's not too bad. Yeah. And we literally just go around the can. There's a reason they call these trash cans in my world because they kind of made these look like little trash cans, little bathroom trash cans. And if you really want to do yourself a favor, and if I was doing this for a client, I would actually use my, my cloth gloves on this just to be sure that I gave it back to them without any fingerprints. But since this one's one of mine, I don't need to OCD it too much. There we go. Right. Here we go. This Mac is pretty good to go. Like I said, this video could be a probably a 90 minute video if I were to tear apart the rest of the cylinder, which is just not worth it for this, uh, you know, mid-year cleaning. And then what you do is this this strip right here where the opening is, there's two little, um, I guess these are like tape guides. They go down the side of, the, of, uh, of this rubber seal right here, if you see it. And then you just literally slide this down, all the way down. And then guess what you do after that? If you said lock it, you win a $10 Starbucks card. Anyway, that's it folks. We took this apart, gave it a once over, and then we put it back together. Now granted, I put this back together without anything in it, right? So maybe we'll just go back. Okay. So once the inside of this is clean, I'll set this back aside. I'll slide this back into our shot here. And then we'll start reinstalling stuff. We'll start with the easy stuff first. Since both sets of RAM are the same, I'm not picky which side which one goes into. But what you do have to realize is that these are keyed. In other words, this little slot right here is at a specific point. It's not in the middle, so you can put it in either way. It's literally off center. And you have to make sure that if you look at the, the tray in here, 
you put this in to the tracks, into these grippy tracks right here, and then you give it a push until it snaps in. And you keep going around, and you make sure that uh, you put them in the right way. Make sure they snap in good. Make sure that they're tight, and then with this tab right here, you lock them in. Okay, and then we spin this over a little bit to this side. We do the same thing. This, these ones are upside down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the inside. So that little tab is right here. Let me use uh, my new pointy tool. This notch right here goes in right there. So you figure out which way it's supposed to go. And actually you unlock it first so they're out. You push this in. Yep, I had it the right way. When in doubt, check yourself because these aren't cheap. You don't want to have to replace these they're a couple hundred dollars for sure and I'd rather spend a couple hundred dollars on something else okay make sure that both of them are straight and then whatever you do when you bring this in when you push this in do not force it if it doesn't go in very lightly you have a problem for example, your RAM's not inserted all the way, and or you put it in backwards. So just be careful with that because you can easily break the stick of RAM that uh, you know costs money, lots of it. Okay, and then we spin this over and we get it to where the port is for the drive which is right here and then here's the disc now again I hope you can see this this part right here is kind of off center you can see that there's more pins on the right than there are on the left and this is your right and your left because this would be my left my right <laughs> so your right more pins less pins and the same goes for this guy down here and you and you figure it out based on where the center is so it's a little off to the left that means the left side is short and actually with these drives having a heat sink on the outside of them it's quite easy because the heat sinks on the outside this slides in you hold it up straight and you slide it in until it snaps or I should say clicks in because snapping would be a bad sound with computers and actually what else you would do is you would line up the little frame up here of the drive with the screw hole that's there because we have this T8 screw that we're going to lock it in place with. Right? Boom. Not too tight. Just enough to hold it in place. This isn't the a car where you need to use an impact gun on it although if you've done that send me a video because I would love to see what happens when you use automotive tools on a Macintosh actually I'm not sure I do that would be more sad and yeah very sad anyway we're gonna <laughs> assemble this before we start crying, we're going to look for the front. And by the way, traditionally computers have all the power and all of the I.O., the input-output ports on the back. This one has them on the front. Right. We slide that down all the way until it can't go any further, and we lock it. Now, when you pick it up, it doesn't slide out. Although, do yourself a favor and support it on the bottom. That's it, folks. We took a 2013 Mac Pro apart, gave it a once-over. It was pretty good to begin with. 
and uh, you know we cleaned it out as best as we could. We made sure that uh, there was nothing damaged or otherwise problematic in here. We made sure that uh, we assembled it correctly. We didn't give it the beans because there's no need for that. And like I said, just wipe any fingerprints off if you're dealing with a client's machine. Other than that, I hope you guys got something out of this. I uh, hope this was eventful and educational for you as it was uh, for us here. I'm sure my editor will learn something because he's a creative type, not so much an IT type. And we'll figure, we'll figure out what's next. Maybe the Mac Minis? We'll see. I, I may also be getting a few older Xserves, which have been running for 12 years. So we'll see about those. If I can get my hands on them, we'll certainly put them on this bench and we'll, we'll tear them apart. For now, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit like and hit the alarm bell to be notified of any of new videos that we put out. It really helps our community. We're starting up a Patreon page as well. That's going to come in the next few weeks. Hopefully we'll get, uh, we'll get that going. And other than that, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below. We do our best to answer every single question we get, uh, unless it's extreme and we get 10,000 comments in the first 90 seconds, then we'll pick our battles. But until that happens, we'll continue to engage with our community. Also, uh, our contact information is on the bottom of the description. Please feel free to reach out at any time. Thank you again for watching. Until next time.